All right, microphone check, 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 chickadee check. I doubt this is gonna work, I have no idea, but I don't have a lot of faith in this equipment. When I'm out for a Sunday ride, thought I'd put a couple cameras on the Bizike. See what's up. Sunday afternoon in July. I don't know what the hell the date is. It's like the 11th or 12th or something. I think it's the 11th. And I am on my 2008 Harley Davidson Sportster Roadster 1200. Roadster being the one with the tachometer right there, and I got dual disc brakes up front. That's about the extent of the Roadster package. Bought this thing a year ago, last August, at Bartels, Harley Davidson, and Marina Del Rey. That's not an ad, by the way. <laughs> it's just a fact. Had 17,000 miles on it when I bought it. We're up to 24 and a half right now. And before this, I hadn't owned a motorcycle in 20 years. So, a long time ago, when I was just a young kid in Ohio, I owned a Honda Shadow 700, Honda Shadow 700, it was in 1987, VT700C, and I had that thing for about, ah, uh, shoot, Six or seven years. Loved it. And uh, you know, went back to college, moved here, got my internship, moved here. Did all the magazine stuff. I've always wanted to get another motorcycle, never had the money, never had the disposable income. So years went by, years went by. Finally, last year, last August, I was able to do this. So, it's pretty awesome. Really missed riding, I love it. But it's funny too, your skills decline. Definitely. <laughs> decline quite a bit. Like, I was never an awesome rider, but... Um, I don't think I was as bad as 20 years ago as I was when I first got this thing. <laughs> so, it takes a while to get used to. This is the largest motorcycle, largest displacement I've ever owned, obviously. I've never owned that Honda. I've ridden a couple big twins before. Most recently was a 2018 Softtail Lowrider, so the first year of the Softtail line after they dropped the Dyna, and I think it was the second year of the Milwaukee 8 engine, so anyway, um, I had that for as a press bike for a couple weeks back in 2018, loved that, that was a great ride, um, you know, if I could afford it, I'd be, uh, I'd have bought a Lowrider S, a current model year Lowrider S, but I don't have that kind of money. Not right now. run that red light because um, essentials in the road don't often pick me up. 
I've stuck at that, I've sat there at that light for a couple cycles before I was like, the hell with this. <laughs> so now, if there's no cars behind me, no, no cars to trip that sensor, I just go. What the hell are you going to do? I am in San Pedro, California. Those who know, know. Those who don't know. That's where I am. The marina over there. San Pedro is where the, it's a, a neighborhood of the city of Los Angeles and it's where the port of Los Angeles is. It's the, the, the most southern tip of Los Angeles County, right next to Long Beach. And there's a route I like to drive uh, from the Ware home. I'll go south on 110 Freeway, get off at either Pacific or Harbor. Make my way through San Pedro. There's a nice sort of curvy road up the way. It's a lot of fun to drive. So when I have a few minutes and I need to clear my head, <laughs> I'll do this quite a bit. So interestingly enough, I don't know if that's uh, something I did wrong when I moved to California and got a California driver's license, but my motorcycle endorsement from Ohio didn't transfer over. Um, I didn't think I had to tell them. I don't know. I don't know what the policy is. Um, so when I got registered here or licensed here in California, I had no M endorsement, so I had to go through the um, test procedure again. And I did that something like four years ago knowing that one of these days I would be back on two wheels. And I did it through the, the, the city or the state uh, Motorcycle Safety Foundation riders course where you ride the little 125s and, and 250 Hondas. And at the end of the course, you get your endorsement. And then I took an advanced riding course like two weeks after I bought this thing, or at least a skill building course is probably a better way to put it. Um, I don't remember what it was called, but it was it was good. Actually, it was quite good. I liked it a lot. Um, and I'd like to do another, there's a couple other like more advanced techniques, uh, more advanced technique schools that I would like to do. Um, short of like a track day race school, <laughs> which uh, I'm nowhere near that proficient at all uh, but you know one of these days that'd be fun too um, but yeah just to build some skills continue to build some skills this is a tough place to ride I mean it's a great place to ride you can ride all year round and I rode all uh, I've ridden every week of the entire time of, of since last August since I bought this thing uh, so you know SoCal is a, a great place you can ride all year round there are some advantages you can split lanes and cut through traffic uh, which helps a lot um, you can get in the carpool lane on the freeway that helps too traffic's so terrible around here you know any little advantage you have it just helps cut cut the little bit of your commute time down not like we've been commuting anywhere though with the coof shutting things down for a while but traffic's back on the roads here for some reason 
and uh, so yeah, it helps it helps navigate when you can kind of cut past cars at lights and in traffic jams. That helps. Um, but yeah, then other than you know the, that's the good side. The bad side, the downside is people drive like idiots here. So gotta have your head on a swivel. And that's where the riding classes, I think, help. I don't know that you can take too many. The more training, the more practice. It only helps. It, it, there's no downside to that. So, um, there's a couple sort of advanced technique schools I'd like to do, like advanced street riding. <laughs> um, one of them happens later this year. In August or October, I believe, I wanted to sign up for that, but, you know, until then. Stop roll around when I can. It was about four years ago I had the opportunity to ride a Moto Guzzi V7, which is a 750cc V-twin. It's a motorcycle that's about 100 pounds lighter than this. I remember liking it a lot. It's a lot of fun to ride, sort of a light, fun, not a ton of power, but great around town. And that's that's one one of the models I was looking at. I'm not like a nut swinging Harley Davidson fanboy, um, but I did want something. I just kind of like V twins, so I, I, I really like that Moto Guzzi. Um, I can't afford a big twin like I was saying before. Well, you know, nothing that I had seen. And I've been looking for several months at the at, by the time I bought this. I've been looking for several months. Ah, check it out, Super B. That's cool. Nice. But this thing popped up at Bartels and it kind of checked off the boxes I wanted. People say sportsters are girls' bikes. I got made fun of the day I bought this thing. <laughs> hey, is that your wife's motorcycle? Whatever, I don't care. It, it fits me. It's a good way to get back into motorcycling. You know, I've been happy with the power. So. You know, who knows? Who knows where I'll go from here, but I like it. And it, like I said, it checked off the boxes I wanted. I wanted the dual disc brakes. I wanted to have good brakes. Um, and it's just comfy. It feels good. It's, it's got mid controls. So I'm not all stretched out. I, I like the riding position. It's not great for uh, road trips, but, you know, I don't know how many people have been road tripping a Sportster anyway. I know it's doable, but a little peg scrapage right there. <laughs> I think that was actually my heel scraping.
so that's fun. <laughs> that's a lot of fun. Um, I'm no Peter Hickman, I'm no Michael Dunlop, Valentino Rossi, I'm none of those people, I know that, I'm not even trying to pretend that I am. Um, it's just fun, this road is a, a good way to sort of practice, it's, it's good practice. There's either a lot of traffic on it, so you can sort of sit and you know, behind a car like this, and, and that's sort of just puttering along and, and practice breaking into into corners, downshifting, upshifting, turning the motorcycle. So there's either a lot of traffic or there's no traffic, <laughs> depending on the time of day and the day of the week. And sometimes you can rip through here. All the way, this, this, that went from, uh, the street goes from whatever the hell that, that road is, Paseo Del Mar, um, that I started on. This goes from um, Paseo Del Mar to, uh, I forget, like Sepulveda, or um, Pacific Coast Highway. And it runs through, this is Palos Verdes, Rancho Palos Verdes or Palos Verdes Estates, I don't know. Um, <laughs> where people who like, who make a lot more money than I do live. Um, but it's kind of a little gem right here in the middle of SoCal, or at the southern tip of SoCal. And it's, um, it's gorgeous scenery and a nice technical road. And I would, when I first got this, I would be up and down this road a lot, just practicing, building skills, building confidence. And it helps. You know, the classroom, the riding classes help. Those are usually at parking lot speeds. So you can apply those skills to more road speeds. And then, you know, if you're in an area with mountains and canyons and mountain roads, you work your way up to that where the, you know, it's higher speeds, longer distances, blind corners, uh, a lot of blind corners at, at higher speeds. You know, this is all through town, it's low traffic, I think this, or the low speeds, I think the speed limit here is 35. So. Plenty of places to turn off too, or at least get out of the way if someone's behind you and you're not comfortable going as fast as that person wants to go or seems like they want to go. You just pull your ass over, <laughs> let the person go by, there's plenty of room for that. Or, and what I might do is sort of duck out of this line of cars and pull down for a minute. Let them build up some distance between me and them. And then, uh, you know, hopefully my cameras are still recording. Check my stuff. Look at that, 24,500 miles, right, right on the dot. 24,500. So my um, Sportster is totally stock. And uh, I'm okay with that. I don't need super loud exhaust. I, I, I think this is, I think it sounds good the way it is. I've already done two oil changes. I did a 20,000 mile service a couple months ago, and then, um, yeah, and then uh, another, I just changed the oil like last week in anticipation of a 25,000 mile service. So, every 5,000 miles, change the oil. Um, I'm going to need to do the transmission lubricant, the gear oil. I didn't do that, so I'll do that probably this week coming up.
and uh, I did purchase a new rear tire. The front was new when I bought it, the, the rear wasn't. I got some mileage out of it and wore it out a little bit, so I got a new rear tire in the back. It's a stock Dunlop Harley Davidson tires. It's fine enough. Springs are stock, forks are stock. Or cleaner. Did change the spark plugs too, and then there was an oil leak. I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere, but the, um, the valve covers, or at least rocker boxes, me being a car guy, I call them valve covers, oh. were seeping oil out at the corners. It's a pretty common problem, from what I understand. The stock gaskets are kind of like these shim gaskets with a. <laughs> Almost like this spray-on coating. It looked like just spray-painted flat steel gasket, like a shim gasket, um, with almost like plastic dip paint on it. There wasn't much uh, sealing material there, so I replaced those. Shoot, I don't know. It was a couple months after I bought it, bought the motorcycle, and then um, I also had to replace the rear wheel bearings. Those, those wore out and I had a little bit of a wiggling rear wheel and it didn't really it's hard to tell like every now and then we just kind of the back of the motorcycle just kind of shift you know like that it felt weird but I saw um, dust like sparkly bits when I was washing it on the, um, the spindle or the hub of the rear wheel and I thought it was brake dust but it was on both sides I'm like oh wait that shouldn't be there on the non brake rotor side so I do wash this thing a lot mostly because I like it to be clean but then it's also a good way to check the maintenance check the status of things check the brake pads Check for other leaks, oil leaks. Um, so anyway, that's how I noticed that. So I took the wheel off, took it back to Bartels, and they sounded like they had to do <laughs> jump through this, jump through some hoops to get the uh, old bearings out, kind of fused in there. Pressed a new pair in, and good to go. I love this thing. It was kind of a lifesaver last year during all the quarantine restrictions. Um, you know, going out in a motorcycle is something you you could ride with buddies and stuff, but you know, it's a pretty solitary activity. So, it gave me something to do when I was tired of being at home doing, you know, computer work, working on the cars, all my stuff that I do for my job. And being stuck there wears you out. It wears everybody out. It's not just me. We all had a hard time last year, but this is one of the things I did to help stay sane. productive thing to do rather than, you know, self-destructive things. So, just a great drive. Look at this road. It's probably 7.30 or so in the evening, 7 o'clock. Sun's going down on my left. Just gorgeous coming up here to, uh, I think this is PCH, Pacific Coast Highway up here. And that's kind of my loop. I do that. Right where I turn on the camera is the, the interesting stuff between uh, then and here. 
the rest of this is just, you know, driving home. So, I'll probably shut these cameras off, but anyway, it's a ride in my 08 Sportster 1200R.